This call is being recorded. Welcome to Ask When Everyone. Today with me I have Roman and I'm going to let Roman take it away and start sharing his story with you guys. So welcome, Roman. Hey, hey, Wynn. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure and thank you listeners for joining us and just to quickly introduce myself, I am a life coach working from Toronto, Canada, and I help people build uh, a happier lifestyle, mostly through helping them with their relationships. So what made you go into the field of solo entrepreneurship? What made you go um, do this? Hmm. Okay, so the first thing that happened to me was back in 2014. I went through a painful divorce. I actually, I actually expected myself to be to be married for life and just 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 have one family my entire life. But my wife realized that I was not meeting her needs because I spent too much time at work and. I, didn't, I wasn't really present in the, in the marriage and in the relationship. I sort of neglected her and my little son. So she filed for divorce and she got it. She got it. And I was like dumbfounded at that point. But after, you know, healing and grieving for a couple of months, I, I realized that I needed to get back to the dating world. So... I, I put myself out there. I started learning dating and relationship skills. And yeah, I got better over time. And I realized, I, I had two realizations. The first one is that, you know, I could relate to people who went through the same thing that I went through. So I was, I became relatable. I mean, let's say the people who are struggling with their relationships and the second thing was that I, I actually felt that I now had this knowledge, had this like sort of deep understanding of relationships, and I could actually coach people in that. And I actually love coaching people in this area. So, and the third, the third component was just the fact that I am a big fan of self-improvement. I love it. I, I like, I focus on it every day. That this is very important to me. And I've wanted, I also wanted to help people with that. Like Tony Robbins is my role model. So I thought that I could like follow his tracks. And the fourth thing was actually immigrating to Canada from Russia. Because I was, I had been a translator for 14 years before moving to Canada. And when I moved, that was like the perfect time for me to make a good shift, a career shift. So this is what I did. So these four components came together. And yes, that's how I am a life coach who specializes in relationships now. And so um, what is your biggest success story? Uh, my biggest success story right now is actually a 40-year-old woman from Russia. She has had huge problems with her son. So he had, he had problems with school. He was not listening to her. He was very rebellious. And she felt like they were getting distant very quickly. And he's just 11. So he's, he's going into his teenage years. And so she, she, had, she had had problems already when he was 11. So she expected that she could be facing way, way more problems and way more serious problems down the road. And she knew that because she actually, as a daughter who is now 20, and she, she carries psychological trauma from her childhood. So my client wanted to, you know, improve the situation so much. So she reached out to me and we worked with her 
to rebuild that relationship with her son from, from scratch. So what, what we did basically is we, we taught her to give love first rather than have all the sorts of expectations from her son. And what happened is this little kid, he completely changed himself. He started to open up. He, like, feeling that he, he's in a different environment now, he's in a loving environment rather than in an environment where, you know, he's getting criticized all the time. His mother has all the sorts of expectations for him. No. Now what he feels is tons of love, tons of support, tons of praise. And yeah, his grades got better. He, he doesn't spend as much time on his phone as he used to. He picked up the guitar and now he spends a lot of time playing, practicing the guitar. And overall, the relationship is so great because she realized that when she gives him love, she feels it. So this is already great. And he gives her tons of love. She did not expect that he could do that because she forgot how, how it really felt. But now, like, it's, it's like they're in love with each other again. Yeah, I love that. Well, that is wonderful. And that's a success story right there right there and now what is your favorite book well there are there are many books i mean as a fan of self-improvement i would definitely pick up the book by stephen covey the seven habits of highly effective people because it's it's so deep i think it's uh yeah it's a self-help book but I think it's so popular because it combines, you know, this the spiritual side of our growth and more practical tips. Let's say it tells you, it tells you that you need to be proactive in life, which is a very, very general principle and, and a pretty much spiritual principle because um, you, like you, you just don't want to be passive because if you if you're passive, that means that you're not using the law of attraction. And the law of attraction is this a very huge spiritual component of our lives because our intention actually is a form of energy that you know creates the universe around us. It changes it, it tra transforms it. But on the other hand, like let, let's say we take the same principle, be proactive. It's actually very practical because it's like, when, when clients come to me and they say, okay, we want to find love, I tell them. So to find love, you actually, you want to be proactive. You want to be, let's say, putting yourself on the spot and just, you know, going to places where you can meet other people rather than choosing to stay at home and watch your favorite TV while eating pizza, which is, which is also good. And it's okay to do that, but if you do that every evening, it means you're, you're not proactive with creating a relationship that you want. So this is, this is the book that I, I keep rereading and I keep finding, like, I, I keep re resonating with the deeper truths in it every time. So I love it. Yeah. And I use it in my coaching a lot because it has so many good stories in it. That are so powerful. Now, if your best friend had to write a book about you, what would the title be? Um, it would be something like opening is <laughs> gonna be a long one, like opening opening myself up to share the message of love with the world. Because, um, yes, I, I, I do believe that our world, like the whole universe, it's built 
out of love. And our goal in life is really to develop our capacity to give love to other people. Because yeah. if, you th if, you think, if you think about it, like the life is basically meaningless. So like we, we're born well, and then we get. Well, life is basically meaningless. So your book title would be um, opening up the wall to love. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so what is your morning routine? Um, okay, I wake up, I, I do my affirmation while I brush my teeth. Then I do my warm-up exercises like push-ups and squats and, you know, just stretching. Then I do my visualization. I do a little bit of breathing, deep breathing. Then I review my, I review my like vision board. I have this file where all my goals are written down, all the important things. So I go through them. I also go through a, a list of my things that I'm grateful for. So, so that I practice gratitude right from the get go in the morning. And then I create a detailed schedule for my day. This is important to me. And th this takes about an hour. So after that hour, um, I'm good to go. How detailed are we getting on the schedule, mind you? Well, quite detailed because, again, I love certainty. So I, I need to know exactly what I'm doing during the day because if I don't, let's say, like I have an hour that is when I don't have any appointments and I, I don't I don't have anything specific to do and I don't plan that in the morning, I will feel anxious about it. So that's why I will plan something into that hour so that to make sure that it's not it's not free from any activity and this will help me feel more certain about my day. I like the certainty. So, I want to play devil's advocate here. Um, we, <coughs> we as a human society, have had so much uncertainty, uncertainty in 2020 due to COVID. So, how um, did that affect you and your anxiety? Okay, that's a good question. First of all, yes, I know that many people do feel anxiety about COVID. Let's say, you know, some of my clients, I did not feel any anxiety about it. Uh, I don't really worry much because I tend to accept things as they are, things like this. So that's not a problem for me at all. If I, like, I, I'm prepared to, you know, to get sick with COVID and even if I die as a result, I'm also prepared for that. So you're that prepared to um, go down to the count? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I will just, you know, well, one of the goals, one of my big, bigger goals is to be as accepting as possible because this is a form of love. I just, I love the things as they are. And if it means that, my physical body needs to die. Okay, that's fine. And it will happen anyway. Maybe not now, but let's say in 40, 50 or 60 years, in the next 60 years. So you're not afraid of death. You're, yeah, um, absolutely. You're not You know, maybe, let's say, I'm, maybe I'm not completely perfect at that. Let's say if I'm in, in the woods and a bear comes at me, of course yeah. I will protect myself. It, it doesn't mean that I, I will not. And it doesn't yeah, mean that no. I will not have fear of the bear. So maybe I do have some sort of fear, but 
you know, over years, it's been definitely diminishing for me. Let's put it like this. But believe it or not, you guys, I am not afraid of death either. Now, I, I am not ready to go down to the count yet, but I am getting um, ready to, if I do go down to the count, I will have more stable medical care outside my front door um, once I get to the East Coast. And I am not afraid of death, nor was my mom. My dad, on the other hand, was afraid of going into the hospital. He said to me, um, I don't want to go into the hospital. When 911 was called um, on early Tuesday morning, and he said to me, I want to go back to the local hospital where you guys just jailbroke me out of and I don't want to go to the big hospital and so my I take it for my mom that death will happen and death will be death and I'm ready and I'm prepared enough to go down for the count and if I need to I need if I need to, I will get um, good medical care. Obviously not, not here, not here. There's no way it's happening here. And that's one of the reasons why I'm moving to the East Coast because I want, I need and want good medical care. But it's interesting, Roman, that you say you're such a scheduled person and, um, Without that schedule, it causes you anxiety. And I I was just playing devil's advocate to say we had so much uncertainty, uncertainty this year in particular that I wanted to get your opinion on it. And so again, you're in the same camp as me. I'm not afraid of death. Death is eventually going to to happen and um yeah yeah perfect and Tia thank you for your honesty I actually I do respect you a lot for not having this fear of death because I I do know that it's not easy it's not easy to feel that well <laughs> it's not it's not easy with cerebral palsy either and it's not easy with weakened lungs and then um every time i wake up and can see another day i'm grateful so yeah. if you had to move and only take five things with you what would they be okay so uh i would definitely take my bike with me my bicycle then um I, I would take my libby app which uh, which gives me access to my public library with lots of audiobooks i'm a huge fan of that like a very huge fan and i would also take you know a messenger app with me because i needed to i really need to be communicating with my loved ones and so you would take books your um you would definitely take books and you would definitely take the messenger to communicate with your loved ones and i think that's a good plan and so roman as we wrap this interview up do you have any questions for me Yes, yes. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, like, my, my one of my questions is, what's like the biggest blessing in your condition, cerebral palsy? The biggest blessing. Yes. In my condition. In your in, about your condition, I know it's totally no. difficult, and and I totally 
I totally honor you for going through it in the strong way that you're doing it. This is this is incredible. And well, I want you like what what's what's the positive in, in it? What's the blessing? The positive is my body makes me slow down. My body um, literally makes me slow down. And um, and I am going to not be working so hard when I get to the East Coast, you guys. And so the um, biggest blessing is I have to put um, CP and now asthma, which I'm 99% positive I have, and I have to put CP and asthma before anything else. And so I am going to not be working so incredibly hard when I get to the East Coast. Number one, I won't be <laughs> locked in a house and have snow on the ground. I will be um, in an open state. And when I say open state, I mean they're more open than here. Um, Florida's more open than here. And people are starting to feel very, 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 very isolated in these closed states. And I am one of them. I mean, I don't know about Canada, but the last update I got um, from my Canadian crew is that Canada's closed and Aspen is certainly, um, certainly not open. Florida, where we are actually, um, they are actually open enough. So, and there's a lot more outdoor space, obviously. And um, how I'm going to deal with COVID is I still have to be careful. Trust me. I still have to be careful. But at least we're dealing with the outdoors rather than trapped in the indoor spaces. And so the biggest blessing with Sable Baldy <laughs> is that it makes me slow down, stop, and take a moment and be grateful for life. Wow, that's beautiful. So it, it really, really makes you appreciate life more, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. It's a... And um, another question that I had was about the, the Kona Iron Man. How, how did it make you feel? It, um, now, if I won, it would have been terrific. But yes. um, I didn't win due to obviously circumstances at that time. And I want to, I actually looked at you guys, I told no one this, but um, if I can get myself back in physical shape and get um, myself um to where I, um, to where I want to be, I want to compete in Ironman Florida, and I was, I, I don't care if my teammate hears this, but it's going to be a totally different team that I'm on, and so I am seriously considering competing in Ironman Florida. I. I competed in Ironman Boulder, didn't, um, didn't, did um, cross the finish, didn't cross the finish line at Ironman Boulder, didn't cross the finish man, the line at Coma due to um, obvious reasons. We got taken down by the winds of um, the winds and the hills of uh, Kobe um, Kona, but um, all in all, I want to achieve that dream of being an Ironman competitor. 
and it made me i was so and this was in 2010 i was so disappointed and angry not and angry at myself for not um and it still made me cry because um uh, i really 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 want I really want to get myself back in the physical shape to do this. I really want to get myself back in physical shape to do it. And I I will never be able to do Kona again. I will the um for the the for the Iron Man I'm able to do and quite frankly I was supposed to compete in the Kona in the Florida Iron Man, but that never happened. So I want to, um, I want to still achieve my dreams of being a Kona Iron Man competitor and actually um, doing doing Iron Man in Florida. And um, and I am seriously looking into it. It will take a team. It will take me getting back into physical shape. But um, I tell you once, I tell you one thing that is still on my bucket list, and I was very angry at the circumstances, and I was extremely, extremely angry at the circumstances and I um I the circumstances are um still aggravate me to this day and um and we're ready to forgive and forget um what happened but in my heart the circumstances still aggravate me to this day, and I, um, I really want to do Iron Man in Florida with a totally different team and a more supportive team. At the time, they weren't um, supporting me, so I got angry. I got ang not at myself because I was put in the. Um, I was put in a victim position. I was put in a victim position and I still get my, um, let's just say that um, my family is a little bit interesting right now to, um, to say, and I will use the word when I get to, get to the East Coast, um, they are basically a word that begins with B, and I, um, I don't care if my family listened to this, but they have used that word against everyone in my life, and I, um, at the time of doing the Kona Ironman, I was such in a state of numbness after my mom died. And I am, um, when my teammate first presented it to me, and a lot of people know this, triathletes, and this is public knowledge, and I have discussed this with <laughs> high class um, personal trainers, I, Vinny Todd, who does a podcast, um, the, and I, go follow Vinny on Twitter, and you can hear my story on his podcast, um, twice, and I interviewed him, I need to reach out to him again, but one of, um, one of the things we talked about is, how triathletes are so self-centered 
I mean, they are so self-centered. So when, now it's not going to be if, you guys. It's going to be when I do. When I do. I am in Florida. And it's going to be one with a totally different team. Two, it's going to be, I'm not going to be in the victim mode that I was. Um, I was placed in a position where I was strapped. I was literally strapped to a back of a bike and I can pedal a bike. I can pedal a bike. I can pedal a uh, exercise machine. That's not the point. I was due to Iron Man um, rules. I needed to be strapped to the back of a bike. And my teammate in the middle of the Cone Iron Man goes, Well, this is hard. I'm like, You think? Because you're not only pulling your weight, you're now pulling my weight. And I can help you um pedal bike we could do um do we can win the dang thing i mean put me on a mission and um put me on mission and i'll see it through but um we could win the dang thing but in the middle of the cool line man she goes well this is hard and she she herself, I think, wanted to give up. And triathletes are so self-centered that if I, when I do Ironman Florida, it's not going to be if, it's going to be when. When I do Ironman Florida, when I'll be living down there, to, um, to it's going to be with a totally different team and I wasn't going to let the cat out of the bag until I got the to the ghost you guys, but unless the cat out of the bag, I just um need to move down there and I need to reacclimate myself to the East Coast. Then once I get organized, I need to um do what I can for my work and then I will take the time. It <laughs> will probably um take me two months to get back into triathlete shape and then I will do it. I will do it with a team and anyone down there that wants to help me out with this huge dream, you're more than welcome to it. And you're um, you're more than welcome to give me ideas on how to do it. And I know it's not gonna be easy, and I know it's not gonna be cheap. I mean, doing a triathlon is not cheap, but um, it's something I want to do on my bucket list. And so, yeah, you guys, that was the big, big announcement that I was keeping until I made it to the East Coast. But now the cat's out of the bag. And so I want to get myself acclimated down in Florida. And I want to... Um, be with a totally different team because um, my teammate and, and she's done this to so many people <laughs> um, she, um, and she and people ask me do you want to move to the east coast because of them the answer is yes the answer is yes I want to move to the East Coast to be um, to be close to my family so that they have access to me. But at the same time, I don't want them 
to be ridiculously mean to um, my family, but to answer your question, to my family, all my aides, to my step family, mind you, um, to answer your question, Roman, when I did the um, Kona Ironman, it made me feel totally defeated. Number one, I was um, in a victim situation. And when I do Kona, when I do Ironman for the, if I ever get to that point, I will be empowered to do it. And I will do it with a totally different team. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing. I felt that you shared just from from the from the very, very deep level with your heart. Thanks so much for your honesty. Well, yeah. Yeah. And people know that I want to do it again. Yes. People know that I want to compete again. I just don't want to um, compete with that team, my team. I will be um, team we win, will be, um, be established again. But I want to do Iron Man Florida, but I just have to um, not be able to do it with that team just because um, the team dynamics is not good. Yes, yes, absolutely. And what I hear from you is that you do have the strength to do it. And you also, you, you have this, <coughs> you have motivation to do it. You, you, you were not able to complete it last time, but you, you want to do it this time. And yeah. And being the, I, the strong person as you are, you absolutely have the potential to do it. As I said, I was supposed to, um, before doing the Kona Ironman, I was supposed to compete in Ironman Florida, and that never happened. And um, that never happened. And I will get to that point where I want to do it and if anyone wants to help me out they're more than welcome to it once i get to the east coast and so bowman where can people find you if they choose to do so okay please go to my website which is www.romanmiranov.com spelled as r-o-m-a-n-m-i-r-o-n-o-v hit the contact tab Book an appointment with me. It's going to be a free session, and we'll go from there. And make sure, make sure to mention that you're coming off Wins podcast, and I'll be happy to give you a thirty percent discount. Well, I will um, make sure you mention that everyone. And when this episode comes out, it will be out in the next couple of weeks. And so, when this episode comes out we'll make it work you guys and we'll make it work and as i said i've got to now get prepared for a move to the east coast yippee skippy and i will let you guys know my go date and um if anyone wants to help me out the more help i can get the better and so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks to you guys. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye.